we've been talking about the love of a man for his wife from the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We've come to appreciate a great many of the inner finer details of his relationship with his spouses and, and to see how it reflects in our life. And the reason we see this is because the Prophet ﷺ was given an opportunity to represent every example that you and I could ever encounter. When you look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, you see that it fits in all of the different situations that we may find ourselves. Some brothers, they say, Brother Yahya, you don't know my wife. My wife is an Aisha. So you say to him, I know you're not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes, no, you know, it's a different era, it's a different time, this was a long time ago, and things are different now, brother. It's not. The essence is the same. My wife is different to all the other people. Oh, we are from different cultures. Or she doesn't speak the, uh, my language, or she's older than me, or younger than me. All those examples, you find it in Muhammad's wife. He married a woman who was Jewish, of Jewish ancestry. He married a woman who was of a Coptic Christian background. Maria al Qutfiya. He married a woman who was many years older than him, Khadija radiallahu anhu wa He married a woman who had been married before him with many children, Umm Salama radiallahu anhu. He married a woman who was so old that there was no longer intimacy with her. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He married a woman who was much younger than him, who he had married her and she had known no one before him, He married all the different scenarios, whether cultural, linguistic, whether age, whether uh, tribal, whether uh, uh, a person who was previously divorced. He married uh, the, uh, the wife of Zayd. Uh, he, he took her into marriage after his adopted son uh, عنه, Allah divorced her. He marries her عنه, uh, So you find all these different examples are set for us for a reason. It's that we can see in different aspects of his life وسلم, something for each and every one of us. There were moments of tension in the house of the Prophet don't ever look at the sunnah just and see it was a, an easy way of life. There were moments where Aisha radiallahu anha, she tells us, I lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for two weeks, three weeks, for a month, I never lit a fire in the house because we had nothing to cook. Tension, financial problems were found with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were other times where Allah speaks to the wives of the Prophet, Ya Nisa and Nabi, a women of the Prophet, if you want the worldly life, Allah can grant it to the Messenger to give you. You want money, we'll give you. You matta'u, matta'an hasana. Or you can be patient on that austere way of life. There were times where there was jealousy between the spouses of the Prophet Muhammad. Aisha once, she took some of the food and threw it at Safiya. Because she cooks better than her. Says every time you are trying to show that you're a better cook than me, giving sending fancy dishes to the Prophet. Here. And the Prophet takes it from Safiya and eats it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Relieves the tension. Right? There were moments of tension and difficulty. This isn't something that is not acknowledged. To the point that the Prophet was upset to such a degree once that he actually abandoned his wives for three days and lived on the roof of his masjid. And the Sahaba, everyone around them, they said, maybe the Prophet talaqa azwaja. Right? There was also an incident where the Prophet divorced one of his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Return to your home. Right? So all of this teaches us that there is a comprehensive methodology of life. That the way of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not confined to old printed books. It is alive. The Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is a living oral tradition. It is a living tradition of conduct, of behavior, of modality that confines every aspect of our life and begins in our home. 
So the final words of advice that we share with each other today in seeking to pursue that love that is only received, that love that we spoke about, that you have for your spouse, is not emotion. It's not I love you today because of what I have with you today. It's love that is put in the heart because of our joint love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ From the signs of Allah being the creator of the heavens and the earth, that He brings down, جَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةَ وَرَحْمَةً خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا Created from, to you, from yourself, your soul partners, and has put mawadda wa rahma. Has put mawadda, a form of love, and mercy between one another. This is divinely placed, which means the moment you find that you do not have mawadda and rahma, you no longer love and are merciful to one another, that Allah is the one who removed it. Due to whose dealings, due to whose sins, yours. Due to your indiscretion, due to your mistakes. And therefore you find the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu teaches us to balance our life through his sunnah in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that that love can remain in our household. And therefore the best of men is the best to his wife and the best to his family. And the Prophet tells us that he was the best to his wife and his family, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our words and to make the time that we spend together worthwhile and full of barakah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our homes and the time that we spend with our spouses with mawadda, love and rahmah. Allahumma ameen wa ila liqa. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anna. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته